There we go, Freddy. Hello, everybody. Ready, Freddy's. We're ready for you all. Good to see you. Hello, family. Ready, ready. Well, we're excited to be here with you for Curology. If you have a minute, which you do, you've got about an hour. <laughs> Would you please repost this and um, let your loved ones know, people that you know uh, need a touch from the Lord tonight? We're excited for what the Lord will do. Let's you know, go. it's always a surprise. I mean, uh, what what's going to happen? Because the Lord is always up to something fresh. <laughs> something great. Ready spaghetti. Hey, Amen. Ready spaghetti? Yeah. And that's just the ready spaghetti. <laughs> oh, I've never heard of that. That's a good one. That's ready spaghetti. It, so Own it. <laughs> All right. Well. Own it. We have um, healing Zoom rooms as well after this session. And if you need um, more prayer and more help and more personalized ministry after this, um, then you can make an appointment. Uh, earlier this evening, there was still a couple of spots left. So you can text the word healing to the number 206. That's the Seattle area code 206 and then 567-1400. Super easy number, 206-567-1400. And uh, one of our team members will put that in, in the uh, feed right here as well. If you're watching this uh, later, not live, then uh, please do make an appointment for the following Tuesday evening, and you can do the same thing, text the word healing to that number. Hallelujah. Text it. Text it. So let us know uh, what you came for today. If you came for healing. Oh, <laughs> I thought you were reading somebody's no, no. text. Uh, <laughs> if you came for healing and if so, let us know. And uh, if you came for another type of breakthrough or if you came to learn how to pray for the sick, um, you know, we've been doing this now for a couple of years. This is so exciting because there's so many uh, teachings in the Bible, so much revelation in the Bible about uh, healing and the power of God. And so I'm going to just get started in the Word of God. And I hope you always take notes. Come on. Come on. I love taking notes because our brain tends to think, oh, I'll remember, but you won't remember. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Even if I wake up in the middle of the night and I have this great revelation from the Lord, I'm like, my goodness, that is the most amazing revelation or amazing dream or whatever I heard or saw. I'll never forget this. And then by the morning, I'm like, what was that again? It was about God. Moses or was it Jonah? What? <laughs> it was Moses and Jonah. Oh, goodness. New revelation. <laughs> no, that, that's a strange one. We're not going to do that one. No. <laughs> and so uh, we want to make sure that we always take notes. We have a notepad and a pen always next to our bed, uh, you know, on, our, on both sides of the bed. And so you want to make sure that you do the same thing. But tonight, let's get into the Word of God. And um, I just love, love the scriptures. I'm going to talk about the fact that, well, I heard this from the Lord, that he is always the same. Now, we need to know whenever we're going to receive from somebody. You know, when you go to a restaurant, don't you look up the ratings? I do. We do. Yeah. We look up the ratings, and sometimes they will say, well, the food is always great, but, you know, the servers are sometimes grumpy or sloppy, mm -hmm. or I have to for ask constantly. I have to constantly put my hand up because they don't, they only come by one time, mm -hmm. you know, or food is inconsistent. That's always a scary yeah. one for us. Don't we don't go to inconsistent restaurants no. where one day it's great, and then the next day the grumpy chef is there no. and it's really yucky. <laughs> And they throw it all together. Like that so we, 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 we avoid those. And so, you know, whenever you do that with, with anything, a dentist or, a, you know, a masseuse, a chiropractor, whatever you go for, a hairdresser, ladies, come on, that's a big deal. Hmm. You, you want to find out who you're dealing with so you know what you can expect. And that's really like a faith, you know, on good faith. 
people say, well, uh, on good, I have it on good faith, you know, mm -hmm. they've heard a good r rumor or, or something about this, and they believe it to be true. So they have it on good faith. They can't say, well, I experienced this, but they heard it. And so, you know, that's how it starts. If yeah. you have it on good faith, that's, that's a good one to try it out at least, you know, uh, but once you've experienced it for yourself, now you can say, this is absolutely the truth. I've experienced it firsthand. We don't like second or third hand information. You know, people always like to give information and then you say, well, when did this happen to you? Well, I heard it or, you know, or people often tell pastors, everybody's saying this. And then you say, okay, so tell me all the people, because you're saying everybody. So how many people, and it's usually one person. And that one person said, well, I think everybody, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to change our whole church and all the systems because one person. No, no. Okay, so now when it comes to healing your body, your yeah, breakthrough, crazy. Your brain, yeah, your brain. Come on now. Um, you know these are these are dainty morsels, right? Yes, yes, People love yes. it. Okay, so but we're not talking about that right now. Um, just repent, praise the Lord. <laughs> but what we want is uh, to come to God with with confidence. Yes. You know that is faith. You were teaching uh, this this month about that. The fact is that when you and God think the same about a thing, that is faith. Yes. There's great confidence and power released when you and God think exactly the same about that situation. What the outcome must be what the outcome will be, what it's for, why it's there, what you should do about it, what he did about it, right? And so and so that then you have confidence because faith is confidence. Yeah. Faith is believing and trusting. Now when when we're talking about faith and we're joking about Moses and we're joking about, you know, other people, but listen, Anyone in the Bible described to do anything great, they had a confidence in God. Yeah. So you think about Moses. It had never rained before. All the water was, we talked about this earlier today, about the earth and everything. There was a circle of water around. It was like a fishbowl situation. The water was around the earth, but it wasn't touching the earth. So how the earth actually watered itself was from springs, rivers, but also from the dew in the morning. But it had never rained before. And now here you have a Noah. Noah is all of a sudden uh, telling people, God said it's going to rain. And what is rain? A new word, right? It's the water that is, a, that is keeping the sun uh, from burning us is all going to fall down on the earth. The whole earth's going to get flooded with water. Well, they were all joking and laughing because that had never happened before, right? But he had it firsthand from God and he believed God. He had built a relationship with God where he trusted that if God said it, it was very true. It was going to happen. And so here he is, you know, it, it's many, many, many years later, he's building and he keeps prophesying and preaching to the people, warning the people. And, you know, the next generation is born and he's still preaching it. How many of you would stop listening to a guy that's preaching about some kind of sign in the heavens that's going to happen for 40 years? Isn't that true? It was 40 years and then he start, started to build and then I think he built for another 40 years. I think it was all together like 80 years or something. Yeah, I got to get my time. facts right, but it was more, at least 40 years. Okay. Now you think about Abram, you know, his body couldn't, you know, was too old. His wife's body was, was even looked like dead, right? <laughs> the Bible says she was as good as dead, her womb. <laughs> okay. But God had said, mm. now this is so important because symptoms speak so loudly because you have it, uh, from firsthand information, right? You're feeling it yeah. yourself. Yeah, you you have, yeah, direct information. And now here's someone that's outside of your body telling you, listen, this is not for you. 
you know, uh, you are to be healed. You And now that is very difficult to accept uh, unless you have a relationship of trust with that person and you believe that that person knows more than you do. <laughs> that is so awesome. When a person is an authority on something, you believe them, right? Yeah. When we go to the dentist, they say, okay, I'm going to do this and then I'm going to do this. You don't really question it because they are the authority about your teeth. They know way more about teeth than you do. You don't even know what it's made of, right? <laughs> so so they know all these things. You believe them. A really good chef, you believe them. Listen, just trust me. I'm going to do this with the fish and you're going to love it. We always say yes. Okay. Do yeah, it. Yeah, thing. we believe you <laughs> because we've never made fish that amazing <laughs> as you do. So... So go ahead. Well, with God, it's the same way. We have to look at who he is. And then we have to establish firmly for ourselves, making it a firsthand knowledge from the word of God, from testimonies, from historical facts. Come on, research God. When I met Pastor Tracy, I became a an investigator. I wanted to know who I was dealing with. I'm not going to just marry a joker. No joker. no joker. And, you know, I'd waited all these years. I'm 26, I, and I was definitely not going to mess up the rest of my life. So I asked his friends what he was like. <laughs> I asked them how long they had known him. Come on, I was an investigator. <laughs> you can be all cute and anointed and everything but listen i wanted to know more right we want to know more Tell us. and my sister wanted to know more then you called my sister and wanted to know about me you're yeah. asking questions i found out later yeah. i was like what you guys are buddies and i didn't even know about it that but you got to research you got to research that's right kathy research god because once you research him you you're gonna know that his track record is perfect it is pristine yeah. that whatever he has ever promised he has made it good now um this 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 is his nature the nature of god is that he doesn't ever change so he's as solid as a rock <laughs> he doesn't ever change how he is is how he is Woo, i feel the pleasure of the lord on me <laughs> for that that he loves that he loves that we believe that about him that he <laughs> He loves it when we believe that he doesn't change, that if he promised it, then he yes. is always going to fulfill it. You know, I've been studying about the coming of the Lord and, and Paul's very clear about it. Just because he hasn't come yet and you thought he was going to come earlier doesn't mean that he's slack or that he forgot his promise, but he's being patient with those that would go to hell if he came right now. He doesn't want anyone to perish and go to hell. Yeah. Come on, hell wasn't made for people. It was made for fallen angels. But people following demons, following fallen angels, follow, following Satan uh, causes hell to enlarge itself, the Bible says, to swallow up the wicked, to swallow up those who want to follow the ways of the enemy. So I want you to know that when we come to the conclusion that what God says is true, his word is true. Come on. I will never throw away a Bible in the trash. <laughs> I won't because to me, I could throw any other Bible, a uh, book uh, in the trash, but not the Bible because that is connected to who God is himself. Those are his words That's right. inspired by the Holy spirit. They, they are holy words. And I believe that God watches over his word to perform it all of it. So now here we have a God who made a lot of promises. <laughs> you know, I was singing a, a hymn last night, <laughs> which usually makes my husband laugh yep. because I know a lot of hymns and you know, just the way I, I lived in Northern Ireland, I went to churches that sang hymns all the time. Usually if it's something that's inspirational, I will remember it. If it touched me, you know, and, and I was singing this, this song about the Lord being faithful. He's so faithful and he doesn't ever change. Now I'm going to read a few scriptures to just boost your faith in the fact that if, if he doesn't change and he was the healer, Jehovah Rapha in the old Testament, and then Jesus is the express image 
of God the Father. And what did he do? He healed all who came to him. He never rejected one person from giving their, their miracle to them. Everyone who came to him, the Bible says, was healed. Wow, he healed them all. And so when we understand that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and Jesus comes on, on, the, on the scene, and he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and then in the book of Revelations we see in the future he will still be the same, then we can trust his word. We can have it on firsthand information that God is the same towards you as he was to the people of Israel, as he was to the people when Jesus was healing them in Jerusalem and Samaria, and he was sending his disciples out two by two, doing the same thing, commanding them to heal. Then he commanded all those that believe in him, believers shall yeah. lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now that is so solid. There is actually, you know, a lot of religious people try to undo that because whenever, when, whenever we have had a bad result, thinking that, you know, we've believed enough, hmm. um, you know, that, you know, our faith was big enough. They usually say they have really big faith and yet they died. Um, faith is not really big, right? The way you, you've studied it in the original text, Faith is long. It doesn't quit until it has the promise manifested. And so, you know, you can say I had really big faith, but then it took so long and I realized it wasn't going to happen and I just stopped believing. Okay, that's not great faith. That is short faith. Right. So that's, that's inferior faith. Uh, you know, there was a man who said to Jesus, I believe, but help my unbelief. You can have both. You can believe that God can do it, but then when it takes a little while, you stop believing that he will do it for you. That is unbelief. And so we don't want to base our faith in God based upon our own expectations right. of how long it should take or how it should happen or who should lay hands on me or you know, what they should say and what you don't like, how you don't want it to come. Come on, I've been healed by people that I really didn't even want them to lay hands on, on me because they were so strange, right? They were spooky. Uh, but then God would say, have that person lay hands on you. And I was instantly healed when I obeyed the Lord. So God is his own person and he does things the way he wants to do them. But you can... Be sure of this, that he has not changed. He is the healer. He is Jehovah Rapha for you today. Come on. Yeah. Now, um, the Bible says in uh, Galatians 21, 33, Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba, and there he called upon the name of the Lord, and he called him the eternal God. That means that he's from all eternity in the past. Come on, there was no beginning to God. That, that's mind-boggling. Try to think about that for three seconds, that God has always existed. He didn't come about. He wasn't created. He didn't create himself. He didn't suddenly, uh, you know, actualize himself. He was always there. Our brain can't compute that because our brain, everything has a beginning and an end. Come on. We started with a big sushi roll and now it's the end of the sushi roll, <laughs> right? There's a beginning and an end to everything, but, but not with God. He is the eternal God. And this is so amazing because Abraham had that from firsthand revelation that God showed him that, that I've always existed and I always will exist. And that means billion, a billion years from now, he's still the healer. Come on. Nothing can change that. Exodus 3 verse 14 says, God said to Moses, I am who I am. Come on. That, that, this is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. I do not change is what it means. I'm forever the same. Come on. We know some people, I tell them all the time, you're like Jesus. You're always mm -hmm. the same. <laughs> You can always depend on them. They're not fickle. They're not going to, you know, be with you. And, and then, and then the next thing you know, they don't want to, you know, come along or they're always up for it. Right. They're always, always there. <laughs> I love it. 
2 Corinthians 1 verse 19. Now, it's really important that you understand this because we know firsthand human nature, right? We know our own nature. We know our family members' natures. We know, uh, you know, colleagues' natures. And everybody's nature has m major variances based on circumstances. But God is not like that. He doesn't ever change who he is. Isn't that amazing? He's not growing into himself. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that. Women talk about that a lot on social media. You may not know that, but I'm just really coming into myself. <laughs> yeah, women like to say that. I'm really discovering who I am, no longer pretending. I'm no longer doing things just be to please people, but I'm really coming into myself. God has always been himself. He is never, he's never changed because he thought people didn't like something about him. He is who he is. So he says to Moses, I am who I am. <laughs> Woo. And then he says in the New Testament that those who come to, to me must believe that I am. Come on, that I don't change. So today, this is very important. This is why, why I believe he wanted me to share this, is that you're, if you're going to come to him for healing then you must believe that he's always been the healer. He's always been Jehovah Rapha. Yeah. And he is that today. He's not just, you know, in the days when Jesus was wearing sandals and a long robe in Jerusalem. <laughs> no, no. Today. I know we love that chosen series. No, but today he is the healer and he will be that billions of years from now. He will still be Jehovah Rapha. He doesn't change. I love that. Now, um, second Corinthians one nineteen says for the son of God, Jesus Christ, who was proclaimed among you by me and Silvanus and Timothy was not yes and no, but in him, it has always been. Yes. Come on. come on. So if God has ever promised it and you come to him and say, so God almighty, I heard that you've promised this to people before. Now I'm wondering. Are you still up for that promise? Are you still true? Are you, are you still into it? It's always a yes. He always wants to heal. Come on. And not just born again believers. You know, before Jesus uh, hung on the cross, nobody was born again and he healed them all. Mm. He didn't even only heal um, people from Israel. That's the most amazing thing to me because at one point, you know, you see this woman coming to him on her knees and she's saying, you know, master, I need you to heal my child. And he's like, this is the promise for the children of, of God. I've come yeah. first of all for Israel and I cannot give the bread of the children to the dogs. He wasn't not actually calling her a dog, but he's saying this promise is not for you. It's for the children of Israel. But she says, well, even dogs eat the crumbs that fall on the ground from the master's table. And he was like, wow, <laughs> that is em enormous faith. You believe that I'm so good. Come on. That God is so good that if he's the healer, that even some of it will fall upon those that absolutely have not even walked to serve God. Come on. That's amazing. And then in the later, later on, you see that people heard about this in Syria. <laughs> They heard about this healing worker, come on, miracle maker. <laughs> and they brought all their sick people from Syria. Can you imagine that crowd of people? And they all came to him and brought their sick. And what did he do? He healed them all. Yes. Every Syrian. He healed every sick, broken Syrian. Ooh, I love this so much. All right. Now, um, Second Corinthians one twenty says for all the promises of God are yes in Christ. Now I want you to know if Jesus has become your Lord and savior and you say, Jesus, you did die on the cross. I believe that I believe the word of God is true. And I believe you died for the sins of mankind. Come on. Then in Christ, all the promises are also yes. Now that's a powerful thing. So with salvation, you get healing as well. That's that word sozo, salvation. It means healing, protection, provision of every kind, spirit, soul, and body salvation. 
how many minutes have I been going? Uh, worry, Pretty long. Okay, just a couple more. Uh, Hebrews 1 verse 12 says, You will roll them up like a robe, like a garment. They will be changed. And he's talking about the heavens and the earth. God, is, God, God at one point is going to roll it all up, people, like a garment. And we're going to get a new heaven and a new earth. And it's going to be great. But you remain the same and your years will never end. Okay, do you love this? I love this scripture. I love this scripture. Your years will never end. You know, it's amazing because you can you can't really say how many years he is because he's always been. But as far as we're moving forward through the ages, you can't even count that. You can't say, well, we've been aware of God this many years and at some point it's going to end. No, it's never going to end. I love that. So um, then Jude 1 verse 25 says, To the only God our Savior be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority through Jesus Christ our Lord, that's why we use his name, before all time and now and for all eternity. So be it. Come on. Amen. It says, so be it unto so me. It. So God, let all of your glory, come on, your majesty, your dominion to dominate over anything, come on, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all time and now and for all eternity. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, he's so the same. Now, you know, we've been talking because you've been just this this uh this push that we're doing what is it called on barrier buster oh, beyond barriers beyond barriers and if you're not part of this yet i think you can still join us we just started day one today for five days every other day we're doing this and you were talking about um in, in us breaking barriers you were talking about that i'm giving away a little secret yeah, but okay. little appetizer Maybe they'll jump but it's in. a big deal this really was powerful um and if you go on our our social media pages you'll see where you can uh, join us but you were talking about how we have to use affirmations because when we speak uh you know all of this science about water has been discovered and they're constantly discovering water but water has l lately been discovered to be able to hold information <laughs> that's so powerful and of course if years ago we found out about a Japanese scientist <clears throat> who would um, play either hard rock music or beautiful music like you know, Mozart, Beethoven, and he would then flash freeze the water as the water is hearing it. And then he would magnify that frozen water that had been under the influence of the music, whether it was hard rock music not hard and like not not nice rock like <laughs> satanic yeah, right yeah. like death steal kill destroy <laughs> or you know the beethoven a fifth right whatever he was playing and he would flash freeze it and then under the microscope you would see ugly distorted uh particles of the frozen water you know, what do you call those little particles you call them um Anyway, you know, even like when you look, Crystal, cri crystallized yeah, like. crystallized. If you look at, um, for instance, snowflakes, many of you have seen that at least, right, online. Beautiful shapes, and all of them are different. There's not one snowflake the same as another, like our fingerprints. That's so amazing. And so, so when he, this Japanese scientist, would flash freeze the water. It was ugly shapes and dull colors, just grays and stuff. But when he would flash freeze the water that was under the sound of this beautiful classical music with beautiful violins and cello and all of the beautiful strings and the piano and all that, there were so many colors. The colors of the rainbow were in the, this crystallized water and the shapes were gorgeous. Like you would want to wear them like a necklace, right? Mm -hmm. And so you've been teaching about the fact that water holds information. Now we're made just about 80%, if you include your brain and everything, about 80% of water is what we are. And when we um, release, come on, confession, 
of what we believe, something happens to me. I don't know about you, but when I was 11, I had a confession of faith that I believed Jesus was the Savior, my Savior, and I received him as my Lord and Savior. And you know what? That had an effect. That confession of faith had a supernatural effect upon all my water. Come on now. I remember feeling so light and free and joyful and loved. I had no more fear of the Antichrist as a thief in the night movie. It was all gone in one moment. All my guilt for stealing Snicker bars out of the corner cupboard, cupboard were all gone. And I told my mom, I shook her arm. I was like, Mom. All the colors are different. Did, you know, I thought everybody had it. I don't know if she didn't have it because she was like, that's nice kind of thing. But <laughs> let me tell you, it's just the most powerful uh, thing to realize that, uh, that when we confess, when we confess the right thing, God is going to transform us. And we must have the confession of faith. Yeah, Amen. That's wonderful. Amen. Your turn. I'm going to check on something. Okay. okay. I'm going to check go. on, on something in the kitchen. <laughs> because I smell something. It's fire. It's fire. <laughs> fire in the kitchen. So, well, I hope there's no fire in the kitchen. because I'm going to run, too. <laughs> Help me, somebody. So this is powerful to know that, you know, by the confession of your faith, water has this ability to capture the information. I was talking to uh, uh, Tony Bianco, one of our one of our pastors and associates. He was talking about a product that he was just being informed of that they have capsulated information of health and life in this water and sprays. I'm not going to do an advertisement, but what's really to me that's powerful is the fact that uh, I do. And there's no, there's not, there's no alarms going off yet, yet. So that I guess we're okay. Uh, but what's really important, what's really interesting to me, is that God has created, I think, all of the world to to hold. All nature has the ability to hold. I think it's the very reason all creation is waiting for the revealing of the sons and daughters of God, so that we can speak to it in a way that it's used to being spoken to, and it will hold the information that we give it. So if we're if we're thinking about the idea of what's what happened in the garden, in the garden, you know, any any you know Adam and Eve could go to the tree, one of the trees, any of the trees I believe, uh, or any of the 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 herbs that were given for 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 nutrients, that it held in itself a seed, something. So I know that we have the very natural understanding that oh it holds in itself a seed that will produce of itself, right? So we have this seed that comes from a peach or an apple, and in it is the same of that. It's a, it's a, it's a cloning ability, or it's not cloning, but it's a, 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 a ability to reproduce itself. Uh, so in, in, in this, I believe it's not just that, but I believe that there's power in the meat of the peach, that there's something that is designed to be there, right? So I believe in the garden, you eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God must have been walking through the garden and every time he spoke something, that which was, that whatever he spoke was capsul encapsulated in that fruit, that tree, whatever it may be, as he's bringing it to life. I think God spoke to everything to bring to life. I don't think God started the, the, the apple tree or the orange tree or the fig tree or the bread tree or whatever that is in the garden by taking a seed, but I believe that his, his voice was the seed of that, which means that all of it is captured in that product. So, you know, I don't believe in GMO because nothing of reproduction is in a GMO seed. There's no, there's no power for uh, me to eat a, 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 tr a part of a, something that's produced from a GMO and go ahead and take and plant that into the ground and it produce again. It is a, it is what I call, and it would be, uh, what is, I don't know, I was trying to find something that, you know, Facebook wouldn't get mad at me, at. but it, it's, it's a, it's a homosexual seed. It doesn't have the ability to reproduce of itself. And so you have to know that that is GMO. That is not, uh, it's, it's genetically modified material. 
So we need to know that God doesn't, doesn't work that way. So whatever he did comes from his voice, comes from his ability to impart, his ability to speak, it's his ability to to impregnate, his ability to to host and house that information. So when you and I speak, you must understand that you're you're acting in the form of God. The Bible says, imitate God. I used to laugh at my mom. My mom has this uh, ability to grow plants. I mean, she's like a green thumb. She would have, you know, she'd get a little tiny ivy plant or a little, you know, one of those ivy vines and it would start like this. And then the next, you know, swinging around the whole house. And I'm like, okay, how do we do that? And I, my job was to go and spray it so that it would, it wouldn't get dusty and, you know, that kind of thing. It was just, you know, my, my mom, but she would, she would walk around and sing and, and, and say nice things. And I'm like, what are you doing? And she is literally speaking in her, her understanding. She believed and I believe it's true today that she had the ability, sorry, I'm just getting down to my mint. She had the ability to um, deal with or impart to life-giving, growing energy to these plants. And they would just take off. They would just grow. And I believe that God has made us that way. He's given us the same voice. He's given us the same power. He's given us the same ability to influence what's around us by what we speak and how we speak and what we speak to ourselves and what we speak to other people and what we speak to our bodies. So if you're constantly saying, I'm sick, I'm sick, I'm sick, then you're going to actually continue to encapsulate in that, in, in, with those words in your body. And one of the things that uh, Yungi Cho d d just does so great in, in his book, uh, The Fourth Dimension, as he talks about the research of when you speak, how you're, if you say I'm sick, then you're, and even though if you're feeling well, or I'm going to get sick, you anticipate it with your voice. He, he talks about there's, there's, it opens up the part of your brain that now will say, okay, I, we receive that. You have ears to hear, let them hear, right? We receive that and it's going to now open up your pores and open up your brain and open up your body to the point of attracting sickness. That's why I believe it was very important when God said to us, you're not a host of COVID or coronavirus, you are a host of the Holy Ghost. So, you know, that was in that was in our mouths. That was in my mouth. That's how I spoke every day. Anytime I was in a circumstance where it the enemy tried to say something different. It was for me, I'm not a host of COVID, I'm not a host of corona. I'm a host of the Holy Ghost only. It wasn't an after I felt the symptoms or anything. I didn't feel any symptoms, but it was always in my mouth. So what is that doing? That's now closing my body, closing my, 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 my pores, closing my mind to the possibility of all those things. Now, I believe the way we speak and knowing that, that we are you know, 75 plus percent water. I mean, it's amazing. You can have such physical ability to touch, but all of you, most of you, the majority of you is water, right? Your brain, your heart, uh, you have to have a certain amount of water intake every day just to keep your heart working properly. Um, you have to, have, I mean, and, and let me tell you what, let me, let me just classify a couple of things. Um, Coke is not water. <laughs> Coke is not water and, and coffee is not water. Uh, tea is is not really water. Those things are they you put elements in them that have certain ability to to drain, to draw, to dehydrate. So tea is great. You can drink a lot of tea, but it's still dehydrating. So you want to make sure unless you're drinking a herbal tea that can yeah. actually but if you're drinking caffeinated tea, mm -hmm. um, then it's going to dehydrate you. Herbal teas will 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 be refreshing to you. Um, so so you have to know that when you're adding, if you are so much water, then you have to add water to you. If you spend a lot of time speaking, you're in sales, you are uh -huh. burning so much water by, by, you burn, I forget how much you burn by just breathing. breathing. Yeah. But if you are constantly speaking, you're burning more, you're burning more. So you have to make sure that you are constantly taking in water. Why? Because you are water, <laughs> you are water. And when you realize, then God wants to speak to you. I, 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 you, if God's speaking to you, he's doing the same thing in the garden that he did with the trees. Oh, this tree here is good for life. 
This good, this tree is here good for the knowledge of good and evil. Oh, this tree over here is good for this. And he's giving identity to all of those elements so mm -hmm. that when you eat them, whatever he spoke to him was encapsulated in it. So we received wow. the, the knowledge of good and evil because that's what God said that tree was for. Yeah. That tree was for that. So don't eat it unless you're ready to have that, right? Don't eat something unless you're ready to have it. So you want to make sure that you are that you are walking in this knowledge that you, if you walk around and say, I'm sick, I don't know if I'm going to overcome this or whatever I'm being. And this was part of the challenge with a lot of people who, um, who fell, who fell sick and were overcome by, you know, the virus or a virus or any, any kind of cancers is because you can, you can try to talk yourself out of something without having conviction. And so when my wife says faith is a confidence, yeah. faith is not just a, I know I should have this conviction. Faith is not that I should, I know I should believe this. And faith is not, it's not even, I know that the world right here is wrong and the government is wrong. And so I'm going to speak against it. That's not even faith to speak against that. That's not, that's not a good classification of faith. Faith is what I believe and what I have confidence in. Whether the whether the whether the you know the the government comes around my city and they're driving around in hazmat suits and you know they pull up in a hazmat you know truck whatever that looks like and they're trying to you know and they're and they're in in or no matter I remember the first thing that you would see on the news is they were throwing bodies bodies were going out of body I'm like okay none of that helps oh, yeah. but you can't change your you can't change your language. You have, you have to declare, it's not just, I don't want it, it's I'm confident In that I, <laughs> I am mm -hmm. a child of God. Mm -hmm. I am. And it has nothing to do with anyone else or anything else. It has nothing to do with the government. It has nothing to, it has to do, only to do with me and the word of God. Yeah. Me and the God that I trust and my confidence yeah. in him. Me and the, right? And that's, if you speak to yourself with that kind of confidence, <laughs> then you know that that faith will manifest something. And I like this, this understanding of the manifestation here because yes. um, I was writing in this, this book that I'm being stretched by, writing, <laughs> writing this book that I'm actually just paying attention as I'm writing it. <laughs> I don't really know the concepts completely. Yeah. Some of it I do, I'm learning the concepts are there because I've had experiences that I haven't had language for. And now I'm getting language right. for the experiences. And then I have language that God's given me that is anticipating an experience. Right. And so we, we, should, we should have those things, experiences mm -hmm. that we don't have language for and, and those things. The Lord's been speaking for the last month, two months maybe, mm -hmm. um, about this. And I've said it before, but I've been feeling it more now. And I, my, the best way I could describe it was, uh, you know, have you ever been to a party and you are wedding and you look up and you go, oh, they're going to drop balloons and you see a whole net of balloons yeah. above you yeah. and you don't know when it's going to fall. You don't know <laughs> when this net, this net is going to be open, but you know, there's a time that's on the schedule of the, of the, of the wedding host that they're going to pull a string or they're going to do something and it's going to be boom and balloons are going to drop. Now, when that happens, when that happens, that's exciting. So what I've realized is this is what I feel. This is how I feel like I'm walking every day, everywhere I go. Everywhere I go, everywhere, every day, I feel like there's a balloons above us. I, believe, I, I feel like God's ready to throw a party and this party is going to be, and he's just ready to release, but he's waiting for everyone to get into the party room. Right? He's waiting yes. for everybody to get ready for the party to start because it's no good to pull the balloons when no one's paying attention. Right. <laughs> so you want to pull the balloons when all the tension is there. So I feel like there's such glory and power ready to be released on the earth, but I feel like it's up to us to get our attention ready, yes. to, to get our anticipation, our expectation. God's about to do something. God's about to do something. Someone asked me, why, would, why does God prepare the way? Well, the fact is, is I always know a move of God is not happening, is not going to happen because no one's prophesying. The prophets yeah. always have to prepare the way because the, the prophets will be the first five to 10% to, be aware. to, to be yeah. aware. And yeah. then they will feel out of place. And so they have to start talking about <laughs> it. There's something coming. There's someone coming. He's yeah. coming. 
And so look at Isaiah prophesied it. John the Baptist picked it up and started to really prophesy it. Mm -hmm. His disciples were expecting it. All is the people that he that were going out to him to hear him were hearing it. I mean, he had more 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 crowd going to the wilderness hearing this. So it yeah. starts to anticipate, anticipate, ramp up, ramp up. Oh, then now all of Israel's in this friction because mm -hmm. there's a contention and then there's an expectation at the same time. Yeah. And that's how you know the prophetic has been working is when you feel just as frustrated as you are excited. <laughs> when you feel just as frustrated as you ex are excited, that means the balloon's about to pop. How long are we waiting for this? This is me. I can't wait for those balloons. Right now we're all paying attention. We're all, all looking and talking prophets. about, look, do you see the balloons? <laughs> There's going to be something coming up. Yeah. Do you see the confetti boom cannons over there? Something's coming, right? And so we start to talk it, and that's preparing the way of the Lord. That's so The good. Lord never yeah. shows up without a prepared way. I love that. He never shows up without a prepared way. So if he is going to catch us as a thief in the night, it's only because we're not listening to the prophets. Yeah. We're not actually paying attention. So he will reveal to his prophets what he's going to do. So if we, and, and there will be some that will caught, be caught off guard as a thief in the night, because that's what the Bible says. But that's not for everybody. That's not for everybody. And if you are literally, you know, have a heritage in the spirit, God, the Holy Spirit keeps you in the moeds and he keeps you in the perfect timing in the perfect place. Mm -hmm. We find ourselves doing things that are a part of the, the, the Hebrew calendar just because God tells us to I do know. stuff. And then we go, oh my goodness. Oh, this is a Shemitah year? We're completely oh, off this the is calendar. A year, this is Shemitah year? I didn't know it was a Shemitah <laughs> year. This is great. So every revival breaks out amongst the Shemitah year. Every seven years, there's an unfolding. <laughs> we didn't know that. We were just kind of always in the right place at the right time, doing the following right things with the, the right Holy people, Spirit. following the Holy Spirit. And now we find out, oh, he's been planning this the whole time. We thought we were just jamming and chilling with him. Can I tell you, it's very important that mm -hmm. in this season, you understand that something's happening. Yeah. So in writing this book, I'm writing this with an anticipation that something's happening. Yeah. Something's happening. It's not happening uh, on the ground, but right. something's happening. Mm -hmm. So this weekend, when the Lord gave me the message that I'm a lightning rod, and I realized yeah. that the lightning comes from the ground. That made me change to my perspective. Instead of just looking up here, yeah. this, this, the balloons are there to create <laughs> an expectation on the ground that something's coming down. That's but exactly. without the expectation from the ground, the balloons are never released. <laughs> and so I have to be a lightning rod. I have yeah. to be this, this one that goes, let the lightning come from me. Let it rise so that... Yeah, I'm not going to preach the whole message. Yeah, it's this, Sunday. It's Sunday. Last Sunday, last Sunday's you can message. go back. But it really, it, yes, it, 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 right it, helped, it made me help, it helped me understand God. Okay, now I understand why we must operate and live in and experience glory here on the earth and expect glory. Not to expect something. I've, I've been told all my Christian life, stop putting God in a box. You expect him to move. You expect him to do what you want to do. No, I'm not. I realize God's been giving me permission because he needs someone to activate him from the earth and say, come on, God. Come on, God. We need come you. Come on, God. We Where's need you. Where's the God of Elijah? And if you follow every one of those. Now, this is important yeah. because this is going to be a season of greater salvation. <sighs> greater salvation. I'm writing on the power of deliverance, the power of deliverance. Now there's more and more pr pr prophetic people talking about deliverance and they're talking about demonic spirits coming out of people. Mm -hmm. But the Lord says that's the first introduction that only is like a preparing of the way so you can have deliverance for a city. And so the Lord's been talking to me about delivering cities at a time. Yeah. And I'm writing, I'm writing of that story uh, when we were in Belfast years ago, we were, oh, we were headed yeah. to Belfast and we, we were just in a, a gathering with a bunch of young a young Bible. firebrand Bible students and, and a song of the Lord came out based upon the scriptures. I saw Satan like lightning fall from heaven. I and think we must have sang it for like an we hour. Said it, we sang the it for a long time sentence. and we just felt the presence of God and the oh, power of God an and we knew it. So we were driving the next night to Belfast for a service. Yes. And as we were driving there, we're just in the car with a bunch of students again and we're just all in the spirit. And it's so fun. Several I cars. I, I really can't wait till we get our reformers in a, in a, in a you want a bus, but yeah, the bus would be good. We're going someplace and it's just oh. radical. I want a plane, but we can have a planes, trains and automobiles, buses. But well, we were, we were headed to to Belfast, right on the border in the city of Belfast, where the tr most troubles were, right between the Catholics and the Protestants, yes. right where the Schenkel Road was. Yes. So when we're and we're going to preach on the Schenkel Road yes. that night, we're going to preach right where the troubles were yes. in the midst of the troubles. Yes. And so as we're going there, 
there's this, it looked like a, a literally like a fireball. And yeah. I didn't describe it like that in the book. So I've got to go back. You go, it, I just, I just described I it as a flash, it. but it looked, that it came after, it came fireball. after, but it looked like a fireball had fallen from the sky and that there was a flash. And then the, the flash so filled the whole sky. It was a sign and a wonder filled the whole sky. And we were like, Lord. Yeah, because I'd lived in Ireland yes. before we got married. I lived there for many years. My parents were ministers there. And so it would be, you know, you would hear a big boom and then you turn on the radio and they'll tell you where you cannot go, yes. right? This city is closed, this street. So I'm like, oh no, we're coming over hill and Belfast is right there in the valley. And we see this fireball coming from the sky and it lands on Belfast and a flash across the whole city, like horizontal flash. And I'm first of all thinking, who's throwing a bomb <laughs> from the sky? We're like, oh no. And so I turned on the radio because yes. first we were all singing and praying in tongues. I turned on the radio to see if we can even get into Belfast for the service. Down, yeah. Yes. And they're just playing music and they're talking about little, little Julie is turning five today. <laughs> and I'm like, what is going on? Another channel. And then Tracy has this idea. He said out loud and the students are in the back. We're like, what on earth? And he says, Lord, if that's you, do it again. And within seconds, another fireball comes from the sky. Boom. Just and and there was, lights up the whole city. But there was city. no noise. It was the most, no. it was a silent explosion. And guess what? Within a very short amount of time, the troubles, the ceasefire happened. And let me tell you, this happened for between six and 700 years, these troubles. Yes. But when we were singing for one hour, and of course, many Christians in the nation have been singing prophetic songs and praying. I'm not discounting that. But it's amazing that for one hour we had those students singing that. Yes. And the next day that principality got kicked out by a big boot on an angel. Come yes. on, kicked him Beautiful. out of that territory over Beautiful. Belfast. Beautiful. And so the Lord's saying the power of deliverance is not just kicking the devil out of a body or out of a soul or out of someone's spirit possession. But the power of deliverance can kick the devil out of a whole region, yes. out of a whole t territory, out of a whole country. And what 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 city turned, turned in a day? City right? turned in a day. And what the Lord showed me is in right shortly after that we were we we were there in Ireland and revival was breaking out. Not only what we were doing, but all throughout the territory, you, yes. there was Fireland. That Fireland, Fireland was, <laughs> they called it. it. It turned in, you know, from Ireland went to became Fireland. Yeah, and there was so much. But all this happened after that big, that big, big glorious encounter of something coming from the heavens. <laughs> then it just broke out in the the the, the Irish. The Northern Ireland revival broke yes. out and then the trouble stopped. Yes. So we're believing. I'm feeling like the same kind of activity that I felt in that day, yes. I feel in the spirit. We're at war and we're at troubles in our nations mm -hmm. and we have troubles not only here. I know we have people from all around. There's troubles in our nations yes. and there's God is preparing some explosion above that's going to manifest glory in yes. the earth. But he's looking for the lightning rods the, that those yes. are going to actually go here, God fall here drop here now in this the lord's saying when i release deliverance it's not just deliverance you have to understand the power of deliverance it's the power mm -hmm. of freedom removing something out of the way so that the fullness of what you are and who you are can manifest he'll yes. remove demonic spirits out of your way so you can think clearly he'll remove demonic activity out of your body so that you can your body can heal itself yes. he'll he'll do a miracle yes. so that you can are healed and deliver it at the same time yes. but sometimes he'll do a deliverance a sozo so that you are removed so that's removed now there's there's two words that i want to just give you real quick the greek words we're not going to go in depth but one is the word sozo sozo is the foundational root word for every level of salvation mm -hmm. if for every level of salvation it means deliverance it means it means um, now i'll just actually read because i wrote some of here a uh, sozo is the root form of all salvation then comes different words like savior or save or salvation itself um, but the word, the word sozo, this, that word salvation is a, is, is a, um, is a noun. 
I mean, it's a verb. Sorry, it's a verb. So it's actually action word. it's action word, which means that God's always actively looking to do this. Yes. He's always looking. And so the word is he's always looking to save. He's always looking to deliver. He's always looking to protect. He's always looking to heal. He's always looking to preserve. He's always looking to do well for you. He's always looking to an opportunity to make you whole. That's what the word sozo is. Yes. And so if it's, if it's a verb, it's always active. Woo! Right now, as you've been listening, the, the words yeah. that are sp being spoken are moving into your body to, to be active, to be active. Then it changes out of our mouths in, as it starts to enter into your body, starts to move, it becomes something else. It becomes a feminine noun, which is the, the, the same word, sozo, but it's the same, it's the word soteria, which is and the form that changes into a feminine noun. Feminine noun means it's going to bring forth Production. something. It's going to produce something. So it's going to enter into your body as a seed, and then it's going to become productive. Yes. It's going to enter in. It's Life. going to be active to find you, and then it's going to flower up, and it's going to manifest in your body. So you're going, how do I get healed? Well, God's going to speak, be healed. It's going to come into your body, and then it's going to flower up. It's going to be feminine, and it's going to satira into your body until it overtakes all sickness, all disease, yes. all cast anything out, kicks anything out. Makes sense? So yeah. I want the feminine vow, I want the feminine noun to hit you, but you have to go, God, I know you're actively moving towards me. I know you're actively moving in my body. Yeah. You're actively taking sickness, disease out. That's you're powerful. actively, yeah. you get the verb function. So then it goes past the verb function into the feminine noun yeah. that it then becomes a part of you. That noun it is a descriptive, a part of you yes. to where now it's a feminine yeah, and partaking. Because if, you, if you're comparing, you know, biology with a baby, you need both DNAs. Yes. You need the woman's DNA to accept the male DNA. Yes. So that's where we are saying the same yes. thing, right? Yes, As exactly. God does. Exactly, same thing. So we, we are- We don't say in, what the news says. We're, and or, we have to say it with the same kind of conviction because yeah. when action comes towards you, there's action. Yes. And it's like, whoo, you can't go to action and be insecure. I'm gonna, no, you have to actually move with, with, yes. with vigor. And then if you're going to receive it, you have to receive with that same level of yes. action, power, and passion. Yes. I receive my healing. I receive my breakthrough. Yes. From this day forward, it changes, right? Yes. When you when you said, this, I'm stepping out of this right now. When yeah, you step, I'm not doing this I'm anymore. not doing this anymore. Then that, that was the feminine noun. You are now embracing salvation. Yes. Salvation was coming to you. Now you're opening yourself up to receive salvation. Freedom. Now I'm a mm, saved mm. person. Now salvation is happening in my life. Now I'm being, I'm in the process of being completed in my salvation. Yeah. Healing is mine, right? Pre preservation is mine. Yes. Deliverance is mine. Yes. You're not still anticipating it to be a verb towards you. You're now owning it. A noun is a, is a, is, is now a, An, like a, a like ownership. A, a, yeah. It's well, a noun <laughs> is is the thing itself and it's, the verb is the action is the action so yeah. what but the moment it becomes a noun i no longer can talk as if it's coming to me no i have it I, now. I i own it it's me it owns me i'm one with it i love that honey because the when we are talk when the lord is talking about salvation yes. which is this word you know the biggest uh, scripture that that speaks about is if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth yes then you will be saved. Yes. <laughs> right? <laughs> and, and confess with your mouth. Yeah. Because that's hard. That's the hard part for people. They yeah. they want to believe in their heart, but they don't actually confess with their mouth. So if you yeah. believe in your heart, Jesus has healed me. Yeah. We want to say it. We say it at, at Thanksgiving or Easter. We say it at these different times. But the fact is, is when you go, it is mine. I have this. I live in this. I receive this now. I'm from this day forward. I am the healed yes. of the Lord, right? That's the yes. power of I am the healed of the I Lord. I am the healed of the Lord. We say that all the time. <laughs> I am the healed of the Lord. I'm, gonna I'm stay not getting healed. healed. I'm the healed. Yes. I, that's by, the, his stripes, the, by his stripes, I was healed. <laughs> I was healed. So I want you guys to receive today this powerful teaching that, that was released today that you should have confidence in the faith yes. that it is a finished work and you should have the ability 
to to echo to, God, to echo God yeah. and let it ring in your body. Let it be like the ripple effect. I think I saw Brad say it was a rippling effect when yes. the life giving rippling effect. So when you know yeah. that your body is water and your body is going to retain, agree with it because it's the same. I don't know how much a plant, how much water is in a plant, but I think yes. there's a lot because we juice them, right? You see a lot of <laughs> yes. you know, you and how much energy all we that get stuff from you can it. give them. So all of this, that all of that means. Everything was spoken into it and yes. it will produce what it is, what's in it. Yes. So know that you are the healed of the Lord. Yes. And that God has not made you someone that is going to be easily defeated. You You're know, not easily defeated. You're not easily overcome. When when we first met, I was on a Daniel fast, only plants and, and a little bit of fruit here and there. I started to remember the names of the children in my kindergarten and the teachers in the kindergarten and I was so very puzzled that that all came back. That is just natural life substance. Yes. But can you imagine the spiritual life that is in not listening and receiving the world's report? Whose report will you believe? But we're only receiving yes. the good stuff. You know, in the Hebrew culture, our rabbi friends, they've told me that when a woman is pregnant, they're not allowed to listen to gossip. They're not allowed to listen to news because they want to protect the life of that child from anything that could infiltrate it that is not right. Not Isn't even that powerful? The news. Not even the news. <laughs> that tells you something. That tells you something. They know something. <laughs> about the news. Yeah. Tells you something about the news for sure. All right. So make sure you take care of yourself. Yes. Speak properly to you. Uh, say nice Agree things to you God. every day. Agree with God. Take the word of God. Speak it over you. But embrace what? sozo. Yes. But don't just be in the so. I want to. I'm going to sozo. No, you have to get it into sotira, which means soteria, which means that you are now allowing it to become yeah. fruitful Active. and manifest in you. Right, you're becoming it. It's yes. now giving birth and yes. reproducing in you what it was designed. That's what mm. fruit. That's what fruit is. That's what herbs are. All of the, the garden. All of it. Yes. It's so great. All the promises of God find there. So be it. Amen. Yes. In us. Amen. So Praise good. The Lord. Well, healing and life and blessings upon you based on the word of God that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, Amen. you are the healed of the Lord. You are the healed of the Lord and the work has been finished. Amen. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, you are free. God has healed you. I think we have uh, any we have appointment open. So if you're interested in uh, getting, thank you, thank you, Joe. If you're interested in being a part of uh, the healing room, you need someone to agree with you in healing. There's no cost for it. There's no we, we don't. Uh, there's no there's no no side game to it. It's just for the sake of yeah. getting you healed. And if yeah. you want someone to agree with you, you can. What is that number? Two zero six five six seven. 1400. 1400 just text, text the healing there yeah and we will agree with you we have a team there a team of yes. teams there ready yes. to pray with you and believe god for your healing because our goal is to beat the devil up if we can beat him up enough we can shut down hospitals and use them Come for on. something else <laughs> we, yeah and go in there believing god that one will put a thousand to flight but multiply that you'll have yeah. ten thousand to flight <laughs> come Thank on you. now all right, bless you guys. Have a good day, and let's continue to do the Lord's work, and let's build the kingdom of God because the king of glory is here, and there's a balloon nest above us yes, ready to break out. Yes. All right, we'll talk to you soon.